welcome back to another episode of Scott Lawrence Farming. Uh, I know it's been a little bit since my last video, but I've had a little bit of a weird year, uh, so I'm going to be playing catch up a bit. But don't worry, still going to cover everything, and we'll catch up in no time. So this video is going to be focusing on building out my apartment garden. That's actually going to be part one of two, where this time we're going to be focused on the actual building of it, and next time we'll be focusing on the uh, planting, planning, etc. So make sure you stick around for that next video. And just as another note, at the end of this video I'll go over what all this costs so you have an idea of what it would be to set up something similar. To start, this is planning out my apartment garden. Um, I didn't have a patio, apartments are notoriously hard to garden in, there wasn't a community garden nearby, um, but there was a giant strip of dirt on the side of my building that had been empty for the past two years. Uh, and thankfully I have a landlord who lives next door and was just able to ask him like, hey, you haven't done anything with this, can I? And it was easy. Um, he said yes, and I was kind of got free reign to do whatever I wanted. The only trouble with this is the dirt that was there was really bad. Um, it was not even, um, I'm pretty sure people had dumped like kitty litter in there, or at the very least a cat was using it as a litter box. So it needed a little bit of a uh, refresh. The first thing I needed to do was get some dirt to kind of like level this all out. And for that, I went to Craigslist. Uh, now you do want to be very careful when you are looking for dirt, um, especially in cities like I am in LA, uh, because you never know what quality of dirt you're going to be getting. Um, so just be careful with that. I was lucky. I did happen to find a guy who lives up on a hill in a very residential area, lots of native um, landscape. So I was fairly confident that this was clean dirt. Yum, that's good dirt. But you want to avoid things that, you know, are coming from commercial sites, um, things that could be polluted, things like that. Um, just do your, your research as best you can when you're doing something like this. I did end up getting about 1,600 pounds worth of dirt, which was a lot um, for my poor car, actually. Um, you can see in these pictures here that um, I was riding very low with my suspension. Every little bump in the road I was bottoming out on. Um, but two trips I was able to get, you know, all the dirt I needed. Um, and I used about half of that to actually level this. And as you can see, once I finished leveling, I even mixed some compost and then I got just to make that soil itself nice and fresh. Uh, because I did want to put flowers in the side of it and not just have um, the garden area be just for vegetables and the raised bed. So two, that does bring me on to my next point. Um, I was going to put some raised beds in here. Uh, the area I was looking at was roughly four feet wide from the building by about 30 feet long. And so I kind of figured I could put two raised beds in there, which so I end up doing two three feet by six feet beds. Um, and that was going to where I was that was going to be where I would grow my veggies, and the rest would, I, like I said before, use for flowers, maybe some herbs, just kind of have a nice dynamic system to try different things. When I was designing these uh, raised beds, I decided to go with something more than just your typical uh, rectangular box. I decided to go along with um, Jenks Prigioni's design um, over on the gardening channel. Um, he uses a like edge on top. Um, of two by fours, which just makes it nice and easy to kind of like use as a ledge, use as a seat even. So I thought that was really helpful, and that's what I decided to go with. I did decide to make one change from James's design though, and that was a suggestion from Gardner Scott, who said it's a good idea to drill the end board into the sideboard uh, because that will give it a little more stability. Whereas if you did the opposite, the sideboard and the end board it pulls away easier um, as it gets pressure from the dirt. So a good combination design there. Now when you're researching raised garden bed mixes, the two that come up the most, at least that came up the most for me, were Mel's gardening mix and the perfect raised bed soil mixture. Mel's is a one-third, one-third, one-third mixture of peat moss, compost, and vermiculite. Whereas the perfect mixture is 50% uh, soil, 30% compost, and 20% other, other organic materials. 
Now, unfortunately, I wasn't thinking I could swing either of those recipes, so I, of course, decided to make my own. And that was just mostly because I didn't think I could come up with all the components and the right ratios. So I basically went to, you know, the hardware store and tried to find what I could to make what I thought would be roughly equivalent. So my recipe, Soil Chef, ended up being about 31% native dirt. And that was just left over from the fill dirt I've been using to level out the area. 29% uh, compost, 6% peat moss, and about 11% each of a raised bed mixture, uh, chicken manure, and topsoil fill. If I had to do this again, I probably wouldn't do the topsoil fill and would just double down on the chicken manure. The reason I didn't add anything like a vermiculite, like Mel's recipe had called for, was the native soil seemed fairly sandy and it drained pretty well, so I wasn't too worried about drainage. And you're probably wondering how I got these weird percentages. Uh, it was basically just each garden bed was 18 cubic feet that I was trying to fill. Um, so this was just kind of based off of cubic footages of the things I was using. So finally get to the breakdown of what everything cost. Uh, for the wood, I bought three 2x12x12 by 12, uh, by 12 boards, and those were, I think, roughly $30 each, so around $90 total for that. And then I bought four 2x4x12s, um, and so that was the edging as well as the um, anchors to put them all in on. And I think those were roughly $10 each. Um, so another 40 on top of that, so around 120, 130 I would say for wood. Um, and this was before I think wood prices got super crazy, so it might be more or less now. Um, I know they're coming down a bit, but TBD. For soil, uh, like I said at the beginning, I got most of the dirt for free, which is great, and also most of the compost, and that's what took up the majority of uh, the fill for the beds. But for the peat moss, the um, well, the peat moss itself, I used about a third of a bag, and those usually ran around $20. Um, for the raised garden bed mix, I think those were around $9 a bag, so like $18, $20 total with tax figure. Um, and then for the chicken manure and topsoil fill, those were pretty cheap. Those were like 2 to $3, something like that. So for the four bags, we can just say um, round up to 3 dollars um, and then just to be fully transparent with like all the prices to getting started for gardening I did get um, a rake a shovel a trowel um, the exterior um, deck screws those were a little pricey as well I mean because I had to use a lot of them I think I ended up using around a hundred give or take um, so when you add it all together it was right around 200 220 dollars um, so yeah, um, not super cheap, but not super expensive either. I think it was a decent price, especially considering I was able to get so much dirt for free. But, um, yeah, just to give you an idea of what I put into this, um, you can definitely do it for cheaper, you can definitely spend more on it, but this is just what I did. But yeah, that pretty much wraps it up for the planning and prepare preparation of my garden space and the raised beds. Um, so yeah, that's, that's it. Um, but remember to stay tuned for the next episode where I'm going to be going into planning out the plants themselves and everything I'm going to be doing there. So see you then.